Hey guys, welcome to episode 8 of our England series. So we're picking up here in 865 with King Ethelred of Wessex being crowned. And in this same year, trouble landed on the eastern shores of Britain. This trouble came in the form of warriors known as Vikings. And Vikings are just kind of collectively guys from Scandinavia, which you can see here is a northern part of Europe. It includes the countries of Iceland, Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Denmark. So it's a pretty large area, and they're just kind of collectively called Vikings, but they could have been from any of these five countries. They can also be called Norsemen. Sometimes people from Scandinavia are called Nordic. There's all kinds of different words. So Vikings in England was nothing new at the time. These Nordic warriors had often harried the coast of Britain since the 780s, nearly 85 years ago. But in times past, these visits had been simply raids by small parties. The Vikings would take treasure, slaves, and whatever else they wanted and simply go back home. But this time, things were different. This was a great army, and they had come with the intention of making Britain their home. And not peacefully, either. The invaders from the north were led by several men, one of the most famous of whom was known by the strange name of Ivar the Boneless. And obviously he had bones or he wouldn't be able to lead an army, so uh, you're not going to be a very effective warrior if you're a puddle of slime. Uh, nobody actually knows why he had that name, but uh, anyway. Ivar and the other leaders landed their army first on the Isle of the Net, which, interestingly, the Isle of the Net is actually no longer an island. It was in the days of Ethelred and Alfred, but the ground has shifted somewhat, and now it is attached to the rest of the land and forms a peninsula. So from here, they began to raid and plunder the province of Kent in Wessex. Now, the people of Kent, as you can imagine, did not appreciate this, but they couldn't fight very well against the great army of invaders on their own. So at last, the poor people could not bear the attacks any longer, and they paid the Vikings great sums of money in return for the promise that they would leave Kent alone. The Vikings took the money, but they didn't keep their promise. They continued to raid the province, until at last they turned their greedy eyes to the kingdom of East Anglia. The East Anglian king, Edmund, immediately tried to make terms with the invaders. He promised to give the Vikings horses in return for peace. Now, this wasn't a very smart thing to do, because horses would only make it easier for the warriors to travel around Britain in their mission of conquest. But it's hard to blame Edmund for what he did. He was probably scared to try to fight them all himself. In any case, thankfully for the people of East Anglia, the Vikings kept their promise this time. They stayed peacefully in the kingdom over the winter before moving on to Northumbria. And sadly, Northumbria was even less prepared to meet the Vikings than East Anglia had been. The kingdom was actually in the midst of a civil war over who should be king. The Vikings took quick advantage of this weakness and in little time they captured the capital city of York. They were again paid to leave, but this time they left a man of their choosing to act as a sort of puppet king over Northumbria, showing that, in actuality, the kingdom was theirs by right of conquest. Now, there's an important lesson we can learn from this story of Northumbria. If we're fighting amongst ourselves, even in little groups like our family, we become easier to manipulate or destroy just like the Northumbrians. Perhaps if these people had stopped fighting and banded together, they could have defeated the Vikings. But, anyways, now the invaders' destructive steps were directed towards Mercia, where they soon took over the strategic town of Nottingham. But the king of this country, Burgred, was not about to give in. He raised his army and even called upon his neighbor, King Ethelred, to come help him fight. Help which he could expect, because Burgred was actually kinsman to the King of Wessex, having married his sister Ethelswith. So, bound by the ties of politics and kinship, Ethelred did end up marching up to Nottingham to help King Burgred, and he brought Alfred along with him. 
And this is the first that we hear of Alfred going to war, and his first interaction with the Vikings, with whom he was to have so much to do later on. He was about 18 at the time, but though young, we know he was a close advisor and a constant help to his older brother, the king. Well, the siege was successful in a way. There wasn't really any actual fighting, and in the end, the Norsemen agreed to leave in return for money, which King Burgred readily gave them. For about a year, things were quiet, but the restless Vikings could not sit still for long, and they eventually returned to East Anglia. King Edmund attacked them this time, perhaps taking courage from the examples of the other kings, but he was soon defeated and killed. Some say quite cruelly. In just four years, the ambitious Vikings had conquered two out of the four great kingdoms of Britain. But they would not even be content with this, as we shall soon see.